In a sun-drenched garden, Alice sits, boredom etched on her face. A white rabbit, in a waistcoat, nervously checks his pocket watch, muttering frantically, I'm late, I'm late, the white rabbit cries out, his voice filled with urgency. Drawn by curiosity, Alice begins her descent down the rabbit hole, following the frantic white rabbit. Alice plummets endlessly into the depths of the rabbit hole, a surreal ballet of clocks and chairs swirling around her. A cascade of bizarre objects clocks frozen in time, upside down chairs, and books with unbound page swirls around Alice. Alice peers down, a growing sense of wonder and trepidation filling her, as the bottom remains unseen. She is lost in the gravity-defying chaos. Alice questions if this fall will ever end. Alice anticipates the unknown world that awaits her at the end of this bewildering descent. Alice finds herself in a hall filled with doors of every shape and size. Her gaze falls upon a tiny door, almost hidden from view. Beside the small door, a golden key gleams, catching her attention. The golden key fits perfectly, yet the door remains impossibly small. Disappointment flickers across Alice's face. A small glass bottle beckons her closer. Drink me, the label whispers. Alice steps into the vibrant garden, her face alight with awe and delight. Panic strikes as Alice realizes she forgot the key. Her eyes dart around, landing on a cake with the words, eat me, iced on top. Driven by curiosity and desperation, Alice eats the cake. A dizzying sensation washes over Alice. Alice grows at an alarming rate, trapped inside the house. Alice, now a giant, finds herself trapped within the white rabbit's minuscule home. Furniture groans and shatters under her immense size as the white rabbit and his friends flee in terror. With a resounding crack, Alice bumps her head, dislodging a chandelier from the ceiling. She groans, then focuses all her energy, willing herself to shrink back to her former size. Slowly, the room expands as she returns to normal. Carefully, she steps over the wreckage and exits the devastated house. Sunlight dances through the forest canopy, casting an ethereal glow as Alice, with her wide, curious eyes, wanders through the ancient trees, her face etched with uncertainty. Suddenly, the Cheshire Cat appears, suspended in the air before her, his wide grin a beacon of mischief. The cat's form flickers, a phantom of the forest, as he rumbles. If you do not know where you want to go, then it does not matter which path you take. With a sly purr, the Cheshire Cat continues. A tea party awaits you, just around the bend. The Cheshire Cat slowly fades, his grin the last vestige of his presence, a haunting smile lingering in the air. A bizarre tea party unfolds outdoors, where mismatched china and half-eaten cakes adorn a long table. Alice hesitantly approaches the Mad Hatter and the March Hare, already seated at the table. The Mad Hatter exclaims, Ah, Alice, you're late for tea. Or perhaps early. Time is such a fickle thing, isn't it? The March Hare interjects. No room, no room, there's plenty of room, Alice responds. You should learn not to make personal remarks. The Queen of Hearts's croquet ground is a scene of utter madness. Flamingos as mallets, hedgehogs as balls, playing cards forming bizarre arches. Amidst the chaos, Alice stands defiantly, declaring, this is absurd. Using animals as equipment? It's utterly ridiculous. The Queen of Hearts, enraged, retorts, Silence, or it's off with your head. Alice stands firm, challenging the Queen. I will not be silent. Your rules are unfair, and your temper is terrifying everyone. As the guards move to seize her, Alice cries out, No, I will not be bullied. This is my dream, and I say it ends now. Alice's eyes flutter open, finding herself back in the peaceful garden. The terrifying dream vanished, 